Hello everyone. Now we move to the seventh round of the Tata Steel Masters section, and we'll look at a game between Vidit Gujarati and Ali Reza Feroja. And uh, what's upcoming is a very sharp, hotly contested line uh, in the Sicilian knight off. You have e4 and c5, knight f3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6. The knight off is on the board. And h3, the Adams attack. Knight c6, bishop e3, e5, knight to b3, bishop e6, queen f3, and knight b4, going after c2, but castles, defending. Rook c8, king to b1, just a prophylactic move, looking after a2, queen c7, a3, and if the knight goes back, then white is perfectly fine. But here's the idea, knight into c2, and we lure the king on the c-file, and we see that the knight on b3 is a bit sensitive, so queen c6, threatening queen a4, so knight d2 here. And the correct way to continue the attack here is to play d5. Well, it opens the line of the bishop on, e, uh, on f8, it threatens d4. And after e takes d5, you have knight takes d5, which puts more pressure on the c3 knight. Uh, so something like rook, a, rook c1 and then queen a4 check. King b1 and knight takes c3. Rook takes, rook takes, b takes. This is going to offer enough counterplay to black to justify that piece sacrifice. So, And here the correct way is in fact not bishop into a3 immediately because then bishop d3 solves problems uh, queen will have to go back to d7 and defend b7 and then queen e2 and white can get a decent play here but after b into c3 there's f5 threatening f4 and then bishops, bishop f5 uh, that's the real threat after f4 and queen into b7 would be a blunder because of queen d1 king b2 bishop takes a3 forcing king into a3 and then queen a1 check King b4 and queen b2 and we'll pick up the queen on the next move so after f5 in fact some quiet move like bishop e2 will have to be played so that d1 is covered and then we can capture bishop into a3 and this is slightly better than that line which we allowed bishop d3 to happen then queen into b7 is possible and then but f4 and the piece has to be returned because bishop f5 is a terrible threat. So something like bishop h5 to g6 and bishop g4, f into e3, f into e3, and then black regains that piece and the position is equal. That is how precisely even white would have to play that position and know uh, like, uh, if white is resist resistant to the idea of returning the material then things can go quite wrong for white. But after knight d2, Feroja played queen a4 check immediately. And this is not as strong because of one move. Well, I'll ask you to pause the video here. Should the king go to b1 or should the king go to d3? Well, if king b1, then simply rook into c3. And after b into c3, then d5. Let's say something like a lot of a lot of things are possible. If you capture the knight into d5, is going to be very annoying. But then let's say rook c1, just defending knight into e4, and we distract this knight on d2, and then play queen b3 check, and black can simply draw the game with king a1, queen into a3, king b1, queen b3 check, and we have a three-fold, and white can't get out of it. But we play king d3. There's actually a chance for a defense now. Black has given up a piece, but then you give up the exchange. So you're down a rook with rook into c3, b into c3, and d5. But king e2, d takes e4, queen g3. All fine. We've given up two pawns, but we are up a rook. So it's black who has to do something. Knight d7, king e1. And it's amazing how often do we see a castled king return to the starting square. And the king is quite safe on the starting square. King on e1. Well, very interesting king march, I must say. f5 now. Bishop e2 just developing. g6, preventing any bishop h5 ideas. 
h4, bishop e7, bishop g5, and f4. Well, the queen really has no place to go, so bishop into f4, returning some material. e takes, and queen takes. You could play bishop d5 here, just defend the e4 pawn, and then after h5 something, and then play rook f8, but rook f8 was played immediately. And this gives up the e4 pawn, actually. And also, Feroja traded queens, knight into e4, white is perfectly happy in this position. And it was a relatively simple victory from here on, let's say. We can see the game, bishop a a3 and h5, bishop f5 and rook to d4, knight d6 was also possible. Knight e5 and h takes g6 and bishop takes g6, bishop h5, trading down. Knight to c6 and rook d5. King to e7, bishop takes g6 and h takes g6, and rook h7. Some infiltration on the 7th rank. King to e6, rook dd7. b5, saving that pawn and f3, securing the knight. Rook c8 and rook b7. b4, c takes, bishop takes, and king e2 a5, rook h to g7, knight to e5, and king to e3, rook to c6, f4, we're just pushing that knight away, and after knight g4 check, simply king d4, and there is no good way to prevent rook takes g6, which will come with another offer, which would actually lead to checkmate probably very soon. There's nothing more to be done and here Black resigned and a nice victory for with it. It all boils down to one move in that attack that if you if Alireza had played d5 first and not queen a4 check, things could have been a lot different. Well, that's chess. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon for the next game.